Well, let me, let me back it up and, and tell you a little bit about the program. Um, the program itself has 80 juniors, and this year we'll have um, 20 or so seniors and another 20 Rotarians that work together training juniors um, in how to be leaders. But what we really do, you, you, uh, the five of you have obviously have a good idea of what, what our goal is, um, and it is to get you to meet other people in your area. Um, learn a little bit about diversity, learn a little bit about other schools and other students, learn a little bit about tech schools, learn a little bit about kids from the city, kids from the country, um, and learn a lot about yourself. That's really what it's about, is to, to give yourself a chance to come out of your shell, to give you a chance to break out and try some new things without being worried and nervous about the other people. Um, you will be divided up into one of eight families, and the way it works, none of the five of you will be together. Surprise! <laughs> and the reason is, is we want you to get to know other people. So you will be with seven other juniors. None of them will have their friends with them either. And the seven juniors will form a family with two seniors who went through RIDA last year, and uh, one or two Rotarians, who most of them have been through RILA uh, for a number of years. And you will start Friday afternoon with a number of uh, drills, exercises, uh, fun events, crafts, climbing ropes, uh, all sorts of different things, math problems, um, drama skits. There's a whole bunch of different things that you're, that you're going to be doing. Um, new programs that we've come up with this year. Um, one of them that the seniors came up with is going to be the last on Saturday night. I can't see, wait to see that one work. But I think what I'll do is let me play. There is a Ryla <coughs> DVD that introduces you to uh, Ryla that I brought. And then I have a little bit more information. I didn't, I didn't quite realize that this was a meeting. What I thought this was going to be was um, the Ryla seniors and the parents. So I, I'm going to explain a lot to you. I want you to be very comfortable with Ryla. Because again, I, I'm very excited about it. And I want you to be excited about it too. Yeah, that's There are not a lot of rules uh, for Ryla. Most of, it, most of it is open for you to experience, to try things. Um, the way it works is you're going to be presented, each group, each family is going to be presented a problem. The seniors have been through it before, so they're not going to tell you the answer. The Rotarians are going to help the seniors in case they get stuck. And the juniors are really going to try all these different exercises from, um, again, physical things like, like climbing up on ropes, um, to mental activities, problem solving, um, to creative activities, um, there will be um, coloring, there'll be drawing, there'll be all sorts of uh, um, challenges like that uh, in your family. And what happens is you'll be working through these things with six, seven other people um, that you've never met. But they're really very similar to you. Um, they're all great students, they're all great people, they've been choos chosen specifically because um, they show leadership potential. And it's interesting to take 80 juniors that are all excited and are all, all ready to help themselves in the future and put them together in one group and it just takes off. It just takes off. We give you the problems and every year there's different solutions. So I'll just go through quickly um, some of the other things. As a junior you've got to get a ride so the parents just make sure that you give them a ride. Um, uh, we don't want to, there's not enough room for all the cars. It's very important that you come on Friday at, I believe it's, you're supposed to be there at 3 o'clock. Um, and the program starts at like 3.30, 4 o'clock. If you get there early, you get to pick the good bunks, just a hint, you know, for you guys. <laughs> the earlier you get there, the better bunks. But, there are, but the rooms, they're really nice. When we first started at Camp Rotary, um, there were some outdoor bathrooms. Uh, there were some very cold bunks. Those are gone. <laughs> Those got torn down, and there's new ones that have indoor showers, and it's, they're not, it's really nice and cushy now. They're, it's a lot more cushy than it used to be. But there's no heat, all right, just so that you know. So do bring a lot of warm clothes. You don't think that in May um, it's going to be cold, but it has been 40. Mm -hmm. And as you saw in that, the, that year, um, it rained pretty well that weekend. It's, it's spring. 
So it may rain. It may rain like it did uh, Monday night. So you make sure that you bring um, the, the Adam got clothes. You saw some of the people in the film were wearing trash bags. Well, they didn't bring rain clothes, so trash bags worked. Kept them dry. And you want to try the ropes, so they went up ropes and trash bags. It worked. I mean, solving problems, that's what it's all about. So we handed out <laughs> trash bags. Um, so you want to participate in everything. Even though something's a little bit tough, it's a little weird for you, you feel like, you know, you're going to fall down on your face, do it because everybody's going to fall down on their face. And that's the neat part of it is you're going to find that when you fall down on the face, somebody who you've never known is going to reach over and help you out. And that's a great feeling. Um, and you're going to become friends with them. Um, just make sure things about smoking, there's no smoking there. Like any place, it is a 40-acre um, camp out in the woods, and they're very nervous about um, forest fires, so they don't want any, any matches of that. Anybody that has... Uh, medicines, you need to drop those off with the nurse. There will be a nurse there 24 hours a day, um, and there is a physician on call. Um, so all of that is, <clears throat> all of that is, is available. Um, obviously, like any program, um, alcohol and drugs are not a part of it, and we wouldn't want any of that part of it. And I don't think in the time I've been there, we've ever had to send anybody home for that. I don't think we've had, one of the neat parts I feel about Ryla is that, <sighs> How do I say this politically correct? But the problem students don't go. <laughs> They're not there. So it, that stuff goes away. Everybody has fun. It's not a matter that you know anybody's trying to be cooler than anybody else. They're all working on the same things. Um, cell phones. Um, cell phones are not allowed for the juniors during the day. You will not be able to use your cell phone. When you get back to your cabins, you can use your cell phone and call and text and all of that stuff, but during the day, you won't be able to use your cell phone. Why? Well, we'd rather have you working together than be buried in a cell phone. So, realize it's going to be a tough thing, you know, to separate yourself. Some of them we have to bring crowbars, pry them out of their hands, but you won't have your cell phone. However, this, the uh, Rotarians may have a cell phone with them. I know I just carry mine so that we can, so that if anybody wants to call at any time, they can get a hold of us at, at, any, at any time. And if somebody needs for whatever it is, um, it's not that tough with it. But we can't have um, um, players, music players, and we can't have cell phones so that you're paying attention. Um, the Rotarian advisors will hold your phone during the day if for any reason, you know, somebody's going to have a baby sister and you want to be alerted for the message. We'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> usually, it usually isn't a problem with high school juniors, but you know, you never know. <clears throat> um, we do pretty well with the lights out. We tell everybody to have lights out, and the seniors have been through the program, and some years they stay up till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, don't go to sleep until they wake up at 7 o'clock and the next day they're dragging. So it's really funny that the seniors say, I'm going to bed. And if you guys don't go to bed, you're going to be really tired. It's a long day. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and it's not over till about 10. Um, and you're going the whole time. Literally, you're going the whole time. There's, there's, it's non-stop action. Um, family meals, you get to go up and get anything. Uh, there's, he's a great cook. Everybody loves the food. It's good. Um, one night spaghetti, one night there's a turkey dinner, one night there's a, I don't know, there's good food anyway. Um, it's very good food, but they always have soup, they always have salad, they always have um, vegetarian meals. Um, and Dick, if you have special allergies, you just tell Dick and he'll, he's got lots of stuff hidden in the back. So if for whatever reason you don't like the food, he can bring out more food. There's peanut butter and jelly to go around. Um, so there's plenty of... Uh, there's plenty of that. Um, and then what we try to do in the beginning, we'll keep you by family, so you'll be eating with people that you don't know uh, originally. And then what ends up happening by the end of the weekend, um, we let you sit anywhere you want. And what usually happens is everybody stays in their family because they've got a whole bunch of new friends. You see all your friends as soon as you get back, and everybody tends to stay together, and, and um, they do all sorts of uh, hand clapping games and noise and all of that stuff. So. Um, what I would like to do is let me let me open it up to the five of you that are going. If you guys got any questions at all, or are the parents, if you guys got any questions at all about the whole thing, I know it's tough to let go for a weekend. I'm surprised one of the kids is not say, I can't wait my parents for a weekend. But I know your parents are here. I know how it is. Does anybody have uh, any questions at all? One, one or another. I've been through this a number of years. Uh, the girls will be in the girls. 
Kale. Oh, I yeah, that's important. Yeah. Well, yeah, the girls are uh, the girls are on one side up the road to the right. Yeah. The boys are to the other side. And guess who's in the center? <laughs> All the Rotarians. <laughs> and we actually do have somebody that walks around at night. So, yo, yes, boys, <laughs> girls are totally yes. Oh, yeah, separated. And if you're caught in the wrong. Yeah. Um, it's really bad because you only got to deal with all You may end up sleeping next to where we're hearing. So I don't want to. <laughs> it's better to stay in the camp. Yeah. How many students per um, cabin? Same. There are about 15 per cabin. They are wooden bunks. There's a bottom and a top bunk. And there are like four rows of those wooden bunks. And um, they're actually, they're okay. You know what they are is, those of you that have been to college, you know the mattresses that are like this? Mm -hmm. They're like those mattresses, but there's a wooden slat underneath it. It's not like the springs. Um, so they're okay. I mean, it's, it's certainly not a sealy posturepedic. Um, but for a, weekend, it, for a weekend, it's okay. But do bring warm clothes. And bring an extra, there are blankets that are there and stuff, but if you want your own, bring it. Um, you want you bring your teddy bear. I've seen those there. They're, you know, all that stuff. They're all kids that are very similar, so don't be afraid of any of that stuff. Um, are there any other, what do you got for questions? Um, do you sleep with your on Street? No. No. What happens actually is everybody is actually mixed up. So you're going to have people in your cabin. There'll be people from your family, but there'll be people not from your family in the cabins. So the cabins actually just are, are all mixed up. So when you get there, you can just pick whatever bed you want in nope. whatever building. Oh, yeah. You can pick whatever bed you want, but the building will be assigned. Okay. Everybody will be assigned the building, and then they're just arbitrarily mixed up. Um, but you, when you come there, you'll have all of your stuff in the back, and you bring it into one room, and you go in, and they'll give you a um, family. They'll give you a family letter, and they'll give you a cabin number. And then one of the seniors will take you to your cabin to put all your stuff in. And it's my understanding that you just, the earlier you get there, the quicker you give up. So if you're afraid of heights and, you know, they're this high, you know, you can get one of the bottom. But people do switch around. They're, they're usually pretty good with that. Jim, could you just explain to the, uh, the, uh, the audience, uh, you know, how do you select the seniors? And were, did they have to have attended RILA? to be selected as a senior advisor. What, what we do is we keep our eyes out for juniors that we feel um, will be, would be really good to come back and would be a good leader. And so what we really do is we, we take, we'll watch the juniors through the weekend. We really get to know each other from Friday afternoon, especially, you know, as a, as a Rotarian advisor, um, I sit with, you know, eight kids from Friday afternoon until Sunday at four. You really do get to know people. And what we do is we will encourage some as we're there. Uh, we'll tell them, you, you know, you're, you're just great at this. You're really good. Would you like to go through and become a leader again? Then we take the applications. Over the winter time, um, I send out in September, usually I send it out to the seniors. Um, and then the people that have the time, we'll, we meet six times. We started meeting in November. All the seniors got to know each other. They remember, some of them remembered each other. Some of them didn't. Uh, remember each other. They were all so enthusiastic. If you take 80 really enthusiastic students and then you take 20 of those enthusiastic, enthusiastic students, it's unbelievable what the seniors can do. And then we talk to the seniors about practicing the leadership that they learned the year before. So we practice in, no we have one meeting in November, we play some games, we get to know each other. In February, um, we go um, tubing at the Amesbury Sports Park. That's it. It's just tubing, getting to know each other, and they hook all the tubes together and go down a hill and have a blast and get cold, and this year it snowed. Um, they had a blast. Then we have four meetings. That's just the seniors. It's the seniors and me and probably one other Rotarian, so that the seniors really get comfortable with each other. Then we bring in the Rotarians, and that, there goes the party. So then what we do is we start seniors and Rotarians uh, working together, and we really do have fun. We put all the games together. We play some exercises together um, and get to know each other. And then by the time we get to the end of the year, we're pretty much down to two seniors per uh, family. So we'll have to usually have two seniors. And that's just, we have 17 now for 16 families. So one of them may have three seniors. We had a couple of three seniors last year. So they are, um, we kind of weed, each, weed ourselves out. That's just kind of how it works. Did you have that one? Was that it? Okay. Um, so what I can do at this point, if you'd like to see um, I, I, I am here, again, to answer how the program works. I don't want to give too much in, in, information to the juniors because I think part of, the, part of the, what's really neat is having no idea what happens. But um, 
I will give you a few. This is a PowerPoint from not last year's Ryla, but the Ryla before. And I do have some, um, <coughs> some pictures on here if you want to see what it is. OK. Uh, that, the one that you saw on the uh, video was it rained all weekend. It started raining on Friday, and it rained until I think we had a little sun that came out on Sunday. We also did Ryla during the Mother's Day flood. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we had water pouring in everywhere. But we did it. We did it the whole weekend. Um, so this is one of the paths up to one of the cabins. <coughs> this is a family. This was my family a couple of years ago. And as you can see, all students from all different schools. Um, this was the senior facilitator. And um, yeah, I think that was it. That was it for the seniors. These were all the juniors. Letty has gone on to Bucknell. Um, these people still, um, Lenny, these people I still get, they're still on Facebooks together. Um, from two years ago, <coughs> and they had a blast together. We had we had a lot of fun. That was that was one family. Um, inside, this is the dining hall, <coughs> and I took that picture because here let the spirit of Rotary kindle fires of friendship, and that's really what the Rotary does. That's the whole group: juniors, seniors, uh, Rotarians, and the wheel. These are the seniors, these are all the senior facilitators, and behind the senior facilitators are the Rotarians that worked with them. And this is again in the dining, this is the dining hall, um, where you'll have all of your meals, and everybody's standing up on a stage where we do some, uh, we do some of the activities. This is another, another family. <coughs> and one more, you can see that they are pretty happy by the time they get to Sunday. We have a lot of fun. This is one of the exercises. Um, they're trying, I can't tell you exactly what the exercise is, but they're trying to work out a problem. And it's a very interesting problem. And they have to work together. <laughs> you can see, they work pretty hard. They get it pretty intense. Because most of the students are very good students, used to all getting A's and used to doing great. And it's wonderful when you give them a problem they have a problem with. Um, another one they're working out. This is, uh, this is, I shouldn't do it on here. This is one of the, uh, he does all of the ropes courses. He's excellent. He is excellent. Um, really good. He's a school teacher, and he's very good um, with students. And he does a lot of the um, does a lot of the problems. So they're trying to work out. This is actually a math problem that they're trying to work out. This is called the human ladder. I mean, no, giant's ladder. And the objective with giant's ladder is you can see the size of a person. Um, this goes up. One more, I think, one more above this. And two people have to get from the ground up to the top, helping each other. You can't get up alone. It's really hard. It takes a lot of strength um, to get up alone. But two people can help each other. And what they usually figure out is one is good climbing up. They stand on the other person or climb up, and the other person pushes them up. Then they lift them up, and then they, keep, they figure out a way to get to the top. And I'm not going to give you all the secrets, because you'll probably figure out some better ways. <laughs> Again, you can see them getting ready to help themselves up. Sorry if I'm in your way. That's all right. Um, these are three juniors um, that participated in that. You can see it gets kind of high. Um, by the way, they are all for the parents. If you can see this here, these are, they're all in a ballet. So if you do fall, and it does happen sometimes, you don't go anywhere. They're on a, they're on a rope, and down at the bottom um, of that rope is somebody holding them. So if you do slip, you don't go very far, but you're still up there. They won't tighten it up, and they won't pull you up by the rope. I'll tell you that. Um, this is the bottom of the, this is how you get up on the rope ladder. Um, it's like a phone pole. They are phone poles, but it's like the height of where the wires are. So you climb up on a ladder, and then there are pegs, and you go up to where the uh, wire is that you cross. There, there's one of the one of the one of them coming down from the wire. The wire, if you can see it, is, is up here. It's up here like phone, like a phone line, phone wires. You'll do it. You'll have fun. Yep, there's somebody crossing up on the up on the wire. There's somebody got up to the top of the giant's ladder. <coughs> Again, helping each other up. <laughs> Is there a sign on it? Nope. Nope. 
Uh, usually you get tired before you run out of time. What's that? So the goal is that each kid to make it to the top? Yep, usually as a team. Two of them will make it. They have to make it, they make it together. And this is what, this is what I think is great about Riley, is you really do, you get out of your shell a little bit, you don't worry about what you look like. <laughs> you are what you are, and you see everybody doing what they're doing, and, and it's just wonderful to not worry about getting muddy, getting dirty, getting, it doesn't matter at this point. By the time you get to Sunday, Everybody needs a shower, and we're all pretty comfortable. This is actually, somebody took a picture of me up there on the wire. You can see the wire sagging. I think that was me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe I went up. <coughs> oh, there's Ingrid. That was, this is Jim sucking up to the governor at that point. <laughs> That's what that was, so much of a picture. These are, the, um, these are the low ropes, and this is a whole team exercise. It takes the entire team to be able to do this. If you can figure, there are some trees in here that they grab, but there's also people that are, you need to be able to work together as a team. A lot of fun. Again, these are eight people that have never met each other, and they really have to learn how to, they trust each other. Because if you don't, you fall down. Uh, people getting to know each other. Everybody has to wear helmets. Everybody has to wear, um, it, it is very safe. <coughs> Another past district governor working on um, one of the, this is actually a problem that they had to work out. This is, a, this is another game. Uh, I can't give you too much information. You did see in the first one that you will be breaking a board. They're gonna teach you how to break some boards with your hands. And here they are, practicing how to break the boards. You will all have the same kind of t-shirts. You notice everybody, it's not because uh, we all had the Ryla 2 2010. I won't tell you what the colors are. Yours have already been picked out. There's actually a theme has been picked out for this year too. There's the wire, you can get an idea um, at that point about what it is. What happens is that once you get up on the top of the wire, you have to pass this person. And this person has to pass that person. You have to work together up 30 feet in the air, figure out how you pass. And it's a little slippery, and the wires got there. As you get nervous, the wires go kind of like this. Um, but you figure, but the two people help each other uh, getting through it. That's the bunks. <laughs> That's one of the boys' cabins. Um, so you can see they're, they're, they're fairly new wooden bunks. And there's a bunk in here, and then there's a bunk up top. One, you can see one of the mattresses, and right, there's a, a kid's leg up here. Yeah. They have fun. They should be sleeping, but they don't. I won't tell you what that is because you'll be making some of those. Um, one of the games, that's actually the human knot, if you've ever done that. This is the um, area out here is between, this is the dining hall in here, and this is the area, they're playing four squares. There's a four squares game going on. <coughs> back at the trees, back where the ropes are. New friends, this is a great exercise where there are two parallel, well, they're not parallel wires, they're actually um, diverging wires that start about this far apart, and you have to stand on the wire and you hold hands, and as you move, the wires diverge, and you have to lean closer and closer on each other, and you have to push each other um, to be able to move along. That is the community room at the camp. Um, one of the speakers. That's where you have to cross. Those are the rope, the high ropes that you have to cross. Somebody else up there. Giant's ladder. Are those, um, are those wires alive? Yes. <laughs> well, not really live. No. <laughs> no. Um, this is a kind of a friendly competition that you'll be learning. I can't can't tell you what it is. This one is also deals with toxic waste. Um, this is this is kind of fun. This is a fun exercise. Again, you got to leave all of your hang-ups at home. There's a little box here, and to get to the box, you have to swing on a rope, and you have to figure out as a group how to get from this point here, swinging on a rope, onto the box altogether. If you step on the ground like these people did here, um, you're out. So they have to squish everybody together. So when you swing across from here, you have to swing, and there at one point they're going to have to they're going to have to hold you so that you don't fall over. And sometimes the whole group moves, <laughs> and the whole group does, and it's a great way to get to uh, to know each other. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. What did he say? This was the 
lava hot peanut butter or something that if you touched it you died. <laughs> there's, a, there's a group trying to get on the board. Um, they figured out a way to put somebody on shoulders. Uh, this is the walkway up to one of the cabins. So this is one of the, um, they're labeled boys cabins where the girls stay because they're nicer and the boys are actually in the girls cabin. One of the um, tetherball games. That was one of the campers <laughs> a couple of years ago. He didn't talk a lot, so he just kept his head. And you can see from the, the smile, this is a girl that she came down. She was just so happy after having done what she didn't think she was going to be able to do. So it's, um, those are just pictures two years ago. It's a lot of fun. Um, bring, your, bring the attitude that you're going to try everything. Um, you're going to do what you can. The more you do, the more you take home with it. And um, it's a great weekend and, and good experience. Any other questions? No? No? You're just going to give up a whole weekend, Friday to Sunday, <laughs> and then we can do whatever we want with you? Are the pathways and all that lit at night? No. <coughs> no. no. It's very, Thank flashlights you. are good. Very woodsy. It's very yeah. woodsy. Yeah, yeah. It's they are, there's actually, there are lights, there are like um, up on um, driving lights. It's actually the pathways yeah, are kind of roadways. But flashlights are good. A flashlight is, a, is always a good thing. Yep. Moonlight. What else did I forget? Moonlight, especially when it's raining. There's a lot of moonlight when it's raining. But those are the two things that I can tell you. Make sure you bring the right kind of clothes. Um, you'll have a rotating advisor, so if it's getting tight in the area, uh, also you're going to have, P Peter will be up there. Um, and you can probably put stuff um, in his car. I can volunteer that, right? <laughs> My car's there. I don't mind people putting stuff in. There's room, there's plenty of room in the cabins. Everybody has a big cabin that they can put in stuff. So I'd rather that you have something and not need it than not bring it and, and want it. Because it's, some of, the, some of the kids come up and they don't realize, they say, oh, it must be great and heated and, and they're, they're, they're cold. They're cold. It gets to be 40 degrees in the morning. And if all you have is a sheet, which some of them, that's all they brought, it, it, it gets cold. Sleeping bags are okay, right? Sleeping bags are perfect. So I would bring a sleeping bag. Um, yeah, there's a lot of snacks. Are they allowed to have food in the cabinet? Yeah, yes. They are allowed to have food in the cabinet. Yep. And there's no refrigerator? No, there's no refrigerator in the cabinet. Nope. No, but there is a refrigerator for, like, medicines and stuff like that. But there's plenty. There's always like drinks and stuff like that that are there whenever you get to the dining halls there's always food out. There's a lot of snacks. The seniors bring snacks so that they can give you sugar boosts. There's always somebody <laughs> brings out a bag of licorice and, and it's like there's a lot to eat. You won't lose weight. I can yeah. guarantee you. You won't lose weight. You'll do a lot of exercise but you won't lose weight. Yeah. Anything else? It's a fun program. You're going to love it. Yeah. You're going to love it. Well. Please, let's all thank Jim for a spectacular presentation, and I hope that answered any questions, especially the parents may have had, and also this is a quick rundown for the children. Yes, ma'am. Actually, oh. are we getting, did, have we gotten all of our information with our nope. list? Of I don't think you've got anything yet. No. You won't get, they won't know where they're going to stay in the cabin until the day they show up. Right, but you, we're going to get a list ahead of time with the list of stuff that they should bring in. Yes, probably, even yes. Though I kind of got an idea anyway, yes. but okay. You will get a list. And the time when we drop them off and pick them up. That whole thing that is coming okay. in the mail. Um, yeah, that's what will be coming email in. Email or snail mail? Snail mail. Okay. Yep, they all come in snail mail. So if you don't get it in the next, by a week or two before, uh, make sure you ask Peter, he'll ask me, and I'll make sure everybody's <laughs> name is on there. But I mean, even up to the last day, if somebody, you, he's already turned in all of his information, I've seen it, so you're all registered for it. Um, so you'll be all set, we'll take care of that. Yeah, but you will be getting a letter that says what to bring. Um, sandals don't work well. When you're up on a wire, they don't work well. I had a girl one year that could not, she forgot, and she just brought like flip flops and she had to wear somebody else's sneakers the whole weekend. Um, so when you're running around and you're wearing somebody else's sneakers, uh, you want to bring sneakers. Wear something that's comfortable. Um, if you have, you want to bring your sneakers, and if you have a pair of like, um, you know, hiking boots or, um, you know, something that's a little um, stronger than that, that's that's great uh, in the woods, especially if it's raining, or they get wet. If your sneakers get wet, and wear, you know, comfortable jeans that you can run in and that you can do things in. Um, you know, wear very just comfortable clothes. Um, wear stuff that you can layer. You know, you can bulk. You'll get a t-shirt. You'll have a t-shirt, but if you want to bring a shirt that you can wear under your t-shirt, and then a sweatshirt, and then 
a fleece, and then a jacket, and then a parka, and then a gown glove, and a hat. It could be free. Could be free. It's, it's happened before. It has snowed there before. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but it has snowed before. And it's also been 80. It's also been really hot in the wow. so you don't know. It's kind of a weird time of the year. Just watch the weather, and then think it's 10 degrees colder than they tell you. Um, anything else? Hold on. Well, it's always better to have too much than not enough. Always better to have too much, and we'll we'll hide your stuff if you're embarrassed about the teddy bear pajamas. We'll put them in our car, <laughs> and, um, and we'll give them to you. No problem with that at all. The blankies will have them. I just want to present you with a gift from the club. Well, thank you. Thank and you very much. A fact. Flag. <laughs> a flag, thank flag you. Banner, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. It was a thank long you. trip from Ames for you. Ah, well, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We appreciate it. Well, uh, the meeting's coming to an end. So again, thank you all for attending. It was great to have all the students and their parents here. I hope you're as excited as I am. And just to juxtapose what Jim has said, I was there last year, and to this day, I'm still incredibly impressed <laughs> with what goes on up there. It's just unbelievable. All right. And I can't wait to go up again this year. It's just, and Jim's been doing it for so many years now. It's spectacular. You guys are going to love it. And that's why I invited you back on June 13th so you can tell us your experiences. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you then. I look forward to seeing you up at Camp Ryla. And again, thank you all. Yes, sir. Is that here at Hillview? It'll be our, our Wednesday meeting, which is 12 15. In the afternoon? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, our lunch meeting. meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, we have two meetings. We have one at this time, and we also have our main meeting, which is. But they'll uh, be lunch. in school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, good. All right. Then it's a day. Can you show us later, Mr. Bernard? I'm sorry. Are you sure about that? If we heard the principal, we'll let him out. Yeah, he yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Now we, we have a connection. Yeah, Peter, I just would like to thank the club, too, for sponsoring the five students. I mean, I, you know, I have the good fortune of being around them every day, and they are truly five outstanding kids, and I, I know that they will uh, not only take a lot away, but I think they're going to bring an awful lot to the program. I'm very confident they will. So I want to thank the club for, for sponsoring them. We're, we're, we're thrilled and honored that they you know, completed the essays, and we're all looking forward to June 13th, when they come back and tell us the spectacular time they had, and they got up the wires, no problem, and did all the games and figured out all the, all the puzzles very well, I'm sure, okay?